so sophisticated. But as you stop and you pick up a package to read the back of it, it will actually zoom in and take a close-up look of your consumer expression on your face as you're reading the package. Companies who do that include a company called, um, let me get this right, EnviroCell, S-E-L-L, is selling in the environment. They will actually come in for a fee and wire any retail establishment or restaurant with uh, extensive and sophisticated surveillance equipment that will actually record people's conversations. They will actually even send in fake shoppers who will push a little card around next to you and record everything you say and do. They will actually um, take... Uh, um, in fact, I think probably the worst thing I heard of EnviroCell doing was they actually wired a Denny's restaurant with hidden cameras and hidden microphones to record people's conversations as they interacted with the menu. And their stated reason is they want to improve your shopping experience. This is all for your own good. It's going to make things better in that restaurant for you. Now, if you can imagine that all of this infrastructure is in place. Oh, and let me name a few other things. They have thermal heat sensors that can track you around the store. They have trackers in the floor that can tell how much you weigh as you stand in front of something. So you take all of this sophisticated surveillance and tracking technology, and the only thing that they have not been able to do as they track you around and see what color hair you have and what's in your basket is they have not been able to tell exactly who you are unless you did something like pay with a credit card or scan a supermarket card, which is something I would recommend everyone in this room stop doing immediately. Um, pay cash while you can. Now, the thing they've not been able to do is know who you are. With this, let me see if I can get it back up, okay? There we go. With this new loyalty card, which, by the way, you would probably not even know you were carrying with this new loyalty card, they can identify you as you walk in the door, and they can then track you actually around the store. There are shelves with digital, real-time price changers on them, where actually you can, and in fact, one of, their, one of their ideas here is to offer different prices to different people. So as you approach the shelf, the shelf would actually be able to interact with some device that would beam your identity, maybe like a mobile speed pass. And there's a store called Stop and Shop in New England that's actually using mobile speed pass devices for payment. The prototype is you would beam your little speed pass at the shelf, and the shelf would beam back your own unique individual price. Now, the, ultimately, the goal would be to charge everyone a different price based on who they are, and of course, they can't do that until they've identified who you are. And the idea for those bottom feeders or those thieves or those people at the bottom of the, uh, of the shopping uh, profitability tier, the idea would be to make them pull their weight by charging them incredibly high prices or discourage them from being there at all because, of course, they're just taking up space and pushing around a cart and breathing the air and using up your cashier's time. And we don't, we don't want those kind of shoppers around here. And hopefully one of these days we'll figure out how to get rid of them altogether. So... The next thing they're working on is putting these identifying chips into credit cards. And in fact, IBM has a proposal underway right now to embed these remote identification chips into people's checkbooks, their ATM cards, their passbooks, so that the same thing can happen to you when you walk through the door of your bank. So as you walk into the bank, the, uh, the stated goal here is that they would know how valuable you were to the bank so they'd know how to treat you. So if you're the person who has, oh, I don't know, $500,000 in your bank right up to the, the federal insurance limit, then who knows, the bank manager may come over with a glass of wine and invite you into his office. If you're the schmo who walks in with 37 cents in your bank account, uh, those doors may actually close up and you may find yourself rerouted down to the basement where there's a swinging light bulb and a teller and a line 50 people long. And that's almost happened to me, actually, at my bank branch in Cambridge, where they actually have uh, put the tellers down in the basement in, almost in the dark. It's kind of creepy. Uh, I don't believe they can identify us yet through our, our bank cards, but uh, it's definitely coming. Now, this uh, device that you see here, this uh, Visa device, this is part of the emerging trend of smart cards. When you hear about smart cards, and by the way, these tags that we're talking about that I call spy chips or spy tags, uh, the, the, the opposite spin on these is to call them smart tags and smart chips, that they're going to make things safer and smarter and better and somehow more wonderful for us. Uh, they're doing the same thing with the credit cards. If you are offered a credit card with a smart chip in it, run screaming, say no. You really don't want that chip in there because the chip can contain all sorts of information about you. It's, it's, it, it can be more sophisticated than simply the number that identifies you or that beams out your identity over a distance. It can actually contain much more detailed information about you and even where you've used the card. Your last couple of shopping trips could be stored on there. There's, there's really no limit to what they can put on there because they can store data. 
Um, and again, the problem here, as you can see from this image, is you have no way of knowing that this tiny device is inside of there. All right. And now, uh, <laughs> when you're in the store, what else could happen to violate your privacy using RFID? Well, Gillette has actually been using these tags to violate people's privacy in the name of stopping shoplifters. Uh, this image here comes from uh, confidential internal documents from the Auto ID Center at MIT. Uh, we actually, and I, by the way, run a consumer organization called Caspian. You can look them up online. will be the first search hit you see. Caspian stands for Consumers Against Supermarket Privacy Invasion and Numbering. And our website is online at www.nocards.org. No cards because we fight supermarket cards, and that's how we got started. Um, one of the things that uh, researchers at Caspian discovered a couple months back at, in poking around the Auto ID Center's website was that by simply typing in the word confidential in the search engine on their home page, you could actually access all of their confidential internal strategy documents. And what made this particularly ironic um, was that when, when this organization was asked, what are you going to do about all this data you're going to be protect, collecting on people? How is that going to be protected? And their answer was, don't worry, Internet security is completely foolproof. And, of course, it was just a couple weeks later that we proved uh, that, that these folks couldn't even protect their own privacy. I have very little faith in their ability to protect ours. So uh, it did create kind of a goldmine for us in terms of understanding what they're doing. And, in fact, had it not been for that little mistake, we would not know about the Huggies baby wipes and the Caress soap and the Walmart trials and the Gillette smart shelves and everything else that we know about. So a lot of what you're learning about um, in, in, in this talk uh, comes from directly from the Auto ID Center and from their own internal documents. So what we found was this one image, and uh, I realize it's not incredibly clear here, but it says RF-enabled shelf theft, prote theft prediction and deterrence at shelf. Now, Gillette razor blades are one of the most stolen items in retail stores. Right? They, they're very uh, value-dense a crate of Gillette razor blades. In fact, if you think about it, I've got maybe a five-ounce package of Gillette razor blades that was $10. So if you picture a big crate of those, they're worth a lot of money. And a lot of them do get stolen. Now, most of them get stolen on the supply side, where maybe a truck driver, you know, kind of goes in to get a cup of coffee, leaves maybe the back door unlocked, and a buddy comes over and crowbars it open and takes off a couple of, you know, crates of, of razor blades. Um, but they do have a legitimate theft problem. It, it is a problem for Gillette. W their solution to it, though, is one that I have a real problem with. What they decided to do, now let me see if I can find it. There we go is hide RFID tags in Gillette products. Now, this is a, an X-ray image. And in fact, it's a, a little bit difficult to see because I believe the bottom part of my screen is getting cut off there. Um, but we'll see if we can fix that. Um, in the bottom of this X-rayed uh, Gillette package, what you would be seeing, and you know what? Well, what you would be seeing would be the actual RFID tag. It goes around and around like a coil. It's got the chip in the middle of it. And they were actually sticking those with adhesive right onto the inside of their package. And they were boasting that uh, not, not one person complained about seeing this tiny thing in there. Of course, who, who would know what it was if you saw it in there? Well, once it was in there, they were using something they call a smart shelf, which we call a spy shelf to detect the presence of the razor blades on the shelf in the store. Now, if you look there, you'll see a little black device underneath the shelf. The shelf is plastic because these um, metal interferes with the radio frequency. So one tip-off to the fact that your store may be messing around with this technology is if the metal shelves start coming out and different-looking plastic shelves start coming in. That's usually one of the first signs that this is happening. Now, this tiny device underneath here is an RFID reader. It reads the presence of the razor blades on top of the shelf. So it might be saying, constantly with this little energy beaming out, 20 razor blades, 20 razor blades, 20 razor blades. And then when you pick one up, it goes, oh, 19 razor blades. And then a hidden camera in the shelf snaps a close-up of your face, a mugshot of you, as you pick up the razor blade off the shelf. Now, they take this mugshot, and it, go, it gets redirected back to security. As you walk around the store, we have reason to suspect, although we're not certain, that it actually tracks you around the store with the package of razor blades. There's, there's a sort of ambiguous image on their website that would indicate that, uh, but I won't say that with certainty. However, what we do know is when you get to the check stand to pay for those razor blades and you scan that barcode number and it goes, oh, Gillette razor blades, we're monitoring those, and you get a second close-up of your face taken with a hidden camera. At the end of the day, security compares all the images from camera A 